All right, let's see what I got in the mail today. Got a Tracer MPPT charge controller. Just a little fella. This is the 10 amp version. And there, now you can compare it there. There's the 40 and there's the 10. It's actually quite a bit smaller than I thought it would be. But hey, if it does the job, sweet. I'm actually, re I'm going to be running this at 12 volts, which it says it can only take an input of 130 watts at 12 volts. But I'm going to be putting a 250 watt panel on this, but it's going to be facing straight up all the time. It uh, will pretty much never get direct sunlight. Um, <coughs> so I'll be doing some testing before... Uh, I do the, make the setup complete. It should be running this thing close to its max. Uh, I'm thinking around 7, 8 amps uh, coming out of this, but I don't think... Actually, I'm pretty dang sure I'll never see over 10 amps, unless I... It's going on the top of my commander. So unless I angle my commander in the right uh, direction for the sun, I should never see more than 10 amps, which these can surge for a small portion and go over. So... It should be fine. And man, I got it cheap anyways. I got it for 75 bucks. So hopefully it lasts. If it doesn't, I'll have to buy another one. I'll have to get the 20 amp version next time. But anyways, uh, just a short little video today. We have lots and lots of snow. And this is the Jeep that's going on on that roof there. But yeah, we have a freaking ton of snow in like just a couple days. So, there's a little update and on the project I'll be putting on the Jeep in the near future. So this is the 250 watt panel, B-grade panel. B-grade only because of that smudge. It's still rated output, they say is 255 watts. So, we'll see about that. Anyways, it runs this, along this old extension cord I found. This wire was cut through, so they threw it out. But I still got two other wires that work just fine for experiments like this. This is not hooked up permanently. It will be changed shortly and moved. Just finished, uh, uh, sorry guys, walking back here. We got quite a bit of snow here. So the wire runs through here, through along the hubs here. There we go. Along the house. So it runs quite a bit, quite a distance. This uh, this line it runs uh, in around there, and it runs all the way. I gotta just put this down here. Runs all the way to here. Uh, that blue line comes up. I just have it makeshiftly connected into my system just to add some extra power because why waste a solar panel sitting around when it can be making you power? So I'm going to take that now. I'm going to hook it up. This I might uh, test this out too. Uh, push around 10 amps through it, see how well it handle, handles it. And uh, tomorrow's supposed to be sunny. And that panel, this is winter sun, so uh, I am getting quite a bit less power in the winter. This should be able to handle it. It should be about its max, around 10 amps. Maybe a little bit over, but hopefully not. And uh, so, and I have the panel directed at the sun for morning hours, so. Um, morning till about, uh, I'd say about 11, 11.30, this will be getting power, and uh, hopefully it won't get too much, because it's a winter sun, and in the summertime when I have it hooked up, it'll be indirect sun, so uh, it should be fine. Alright, so I have my test set up, which is going to be this charger on the 20 amp setting. Now that's going to be way too much for this controller. So what I did 
I have the charger running into this capacitor because I want to clean the power out coming out of this because it's going into an MPPT. I don't want any dirty power, intermittent power going into that. It's just going to lower its life and uh, wreck it eventually. So then comes out of the cap into this really thin, long, about uh, 12, 14 feet of uh, thin wire. So the resistance in this wire is going to bring the 20, 25 amps that that thing puts out down to around 10 amps. And I've tested this and it uh, it's about 10, a little, little higher than 10 amps. And I have a watt meter that's going to measure the watts going in. And uh, this will show us what is going out. This thing's not completely accurate, so don't take what this thing reads uh, 100%, but it's pretty close. So let's uh, go with the test. <coughs> Battery voltage. So yes, I'll take some current from it. Okay, so 20 amp setting. Okay, so that's the input voltage. 19, 19, all right, starting to take some power here, watch the watch climb, and that's what it's pulling, so it's pulling 10 amps, 10.3, 158 watts. Putting into my batteries, 10.6. Input voltage is 15 volts. Output voltage is 13.8 volts. And now it's 11, well, it was at 11 point uh, 8 amps per second, but now the voltages are equalizing. So as the voltages equalize, uh, the input amperage and the output amperage should be about the same. So 15 to put some odd. 10.3 amps going into the batteries and 10.09, no, 9.99 amps going in. 9.8 amps going into the batteries. As the voltage goes up, this thing puts out less amperage, less watts into the batteries, and that's what we are seeing here. So this is a pretty hard test to do because I'm only one volt, maybe a volt and a half higher than the system, but 8.9 and 9.5. Nope, no, 10 amps. 10 amps going in and 9.5 amps going into the controller at 15 and a half volts. So it is working as an MPPT. Um, this is just a hard test to do properly, but it does handle uh, 10 amps, no problem. And it did go over for a little bit. Now let's check my wires here. Uh, they haven't gotten hot or anything yet. That's good. Uh, this side here. Oh, they're doing just fine. Perfect little resistive load test. Now, I'm going to cut two feet off this cable and see how that increases my amps because I want to go a little further than 10 amps on this thing. I know it can handle it. I did 45 amps out of a 40 amp charge controller. So, Oh yes, here's another problem. I have uh, these flimsy little cables going from the battery side into the battery. So look at the difference here. So this is the charge controller here. That's plugged into there. It runs through this cord into the back of this one. So this one is showing the actual voltage is 13.8, but there's a difference. Look at this difference. So that'll throw it off like crazy. I need to... Uh, these cables should be thicker for a test like this, for it to be accurate. But uh, I just want to check this, uh, see if it's getting warm at all. It's not, it's ice cold, cold as can be, just like it is out here. 
retarded cold. Now I'm going to cut a few feet off that wire, see if it increases the amps. So right now we're holding it around 8, 9 amps, no, between 8 and 9 amps. It keeps jumping. It's searching, I think, for the maximum power point. This one's 8.7. Problem is, is that's almost at the floating voltage. Start uh, reducing uh, power going into the batteries. Alright, I'm going to cut a few feet off this wire here and uh, turn the video back on. Alright, cut about two, two and a half feet off there. Hopefully didn't increase my amp output too much. And hopefully the wires don't melt. Everything's the same. We're back down to around 13 volts. And let's hit it. Right on to the 20 amp setting again. Everything's the same as before. glare away. See this thing start to work. <coughs> I'm going to disconnect this if it goes too far past 10 amps. Eleven point one amps going out, and around ten amps going in. Now we're at ten point five because the voltage is going up and it's equalizing. Ah, I'm gonna put. Where is this thing? I'm gonna put a drain on my system. I want to get it down a bit, so I'm gonna turn this off. So now it's off. Let's uh. Use some power out of these batteries. I'll put this where it's not gonna short something out. Plus, I can warm my hands off of it after. My hands are freezing. All right. So we'll just connect this uh, to a main spot here. Oh, come on. I don't want to go on that side that's fused. I want to go on a side that's not fused. Just because it's, I'm sure the fuses won't go, but I don't want to risk it. Alright, so this is a 100 amp load. Let's see how far my batteries dip. They're quite a bit above 13 volts at the moment. Right. So let's do it. Wouldn't it be nice to have a battery this powerful in your car? <laughs> we'll go until uh, it starts to glow. Here we go. All right. Oh, that's nice. <sighs> Dual purpose right here. Not, it's not waste any energy. But uh, I'm gonna just do that uh, one more time after this cools. It is cooling quite quickly. And the voltage is 12.7 now. And I'm gonna hold it again. Watch the voltage drop. 12.6. That stays at 12.6, and we're going nice and hot again. Man, it's cold outside. Anyways. All right, let's do this one more time here. Let's figure this out. Now it should uh, hold the current. So at the watt meter. Seventy five watts. Ooh, wow. Starting to really. Eh. About 12, almost 12 amps there for a bit. 11.3 amps, 12.2 amps. Okay, and this is a 10 amp charge controller. 12.4 amps. 11.7. Looks like it's equalizing a bit here. And this is what is act the batteries are actually at, and this is the 
the losses in the line. With this tiny little short little black cable from there to there. Obviously can't handle 12 amps. It's actually kind of warm. This whole clip is actually kind of warm. Yeah. Well, there's some losses. That's 175 amps input. Or watts input, I mean. So this thing can actually... Um, maybe not all day continuous in a hot environment, but it looks like it can do more than it's rated for. I like that. That's nice. I like it when companies uh, uh, are very, uh, um, I guess, on the negative side of what they're rating their products, which is nice on the low side, because it says I can only put 130 watts input at 12 volts. Well, I'm putting 100, almost 180. Oh, just oh, between 170 and 180. It keeps dipping and going up and down. And uh, seems to be handling it. No problem. Then again, it is cold outside. This thing is still ice cold. It's not warming up at all. I can even show you. Let's see here. What's the ground? 24 Fahrenheit. What is... It's colder. Oh, hold on. 24, 25... We've got right on the heat sink, the important part right there. And that's the temperature, 28. So it's still cold. This thing, uh, I had it indoors for a little bit too, so maybe that's why it won't. Now I'm about to do something daring. I'm about to hit the load button while this is running and see what the, the amp output is. I'm really hoping it doesn't wreck this thing at all, but... Uh, Anyways, oh, this dropped here. I'm gonna keep this up here somehow. Come on. All right. So I'm gonna hold you guys on this to see what the the amps are going to the batteries because that's what really matters. So here's the load. Load is on. What are we going up to here? It takes forever to update this thing. Eleven point four. Should really get start going up. Twelve point seven. All right, I had to shut the load off. It got red hot, so it went up to twelve point seven. Now, what did uh, what did this go up to? I wonder. I'm gonna hit the load again just shortly because this one updates pretty quickly. So my input went to really didn't change, but this is really getting hot, so. So about 180 watts continuously going in through these cables. They're not hot on the input side, but these ones going out, they're warm. Uh, where's the other one right here? Yeah, it's warm, but not hot. So I am impressed with this so far. I think it'll serve my purpose quite well. I might, uh, if I end up uh, having problems with it, not, uh, or put getting too warm from the output power going into it I'm going to uh, mount a fan on it to keep it cool but that's my little charge controller that I'm going to be putting in my Jeep